Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Ryan Havikan coming at you from the Norfolk Community TV station in Norfolk, Massachusetts. I am here to give you the know-how on one of the biggest conventions to ever be held in the U.S. A place where all things pop culture are put on display and where geeks, fanboys, and fangirls from all walks of life come together to celebrate what they enjoy. We've got all of that information and more right here as I take you inside Comic-Con. Welcome to our first installment of Inside Comic-Con. Once again, I am your host, Ryan Havikan, and I am eager to serve as your tour guide into this fantastic world. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar with this event, Comic-Con is a series of annual conventions that showcase a wide array of pop culture and entertainment properties across all spectrums and genres, but focusing primarily on sci-fi, horror, animation, and fantasy. Everything from upcoming movies, TV shows, and video games, to all the latest comics, merchandise, and collectibles, this convention has it all. The San Diego Convention, which is where it all began, started in 1970, which was originally established as the Golden State Comic Book Convention. Its founders included native San Diegans Shel Dorf, Richard Alf, Ken Kruger, Mike Towery, Greg Baer, Barry Alfonso, and Bob Sork. Originally meant to be a one-day event for comic book collectors, due to its popularity, it expanded to four days and has continued to grow over the years. To this day, it is considered by many to be one of the largest conventions in the world, with more than 130,000 people attending the San Diego Convention, held inside the San Diego Convention Center. Many celebrities, ranging from TV and film stars to renowned and aspiring comic book writers and artists, have made appearances at the event, whether at panels or at booths. The main company, Comic-Con International, has also produced two related conventions in California, WonderCon in Anaheim and the Alternative Press Expo, or APE, in San Francisco. No matter what convention you go to, one thing for sure is that people from all over flock to visit this marvel of entertainment showcase that is covered and seen worldwide. I'm sure you're probably wondering, how can one simply manage being at a convention like that? As I have said before, a lot of people attend these types of conventions, and they have their own experiences regarding these events, one of whom is actually in the studio with us today. Please welcome Danielle Verrier. So, before we begin, please explain to the viewers exactly what your experience is in regards to going to these conventions. So, I've been going to conventions since, oh, like, I want to say 2011, 2012, something like that. So quite a long time. And uh, actually, maybe even sooner than that, back in college, I started going to some smaller local conventions myself. And then when I met a few friends, we went to New York Comic Con one year, as we heard that's kind of the big place to be. And we went to that for like five or six years in a row. That was like our big thing every year and then I also go to like some smaller more traditional local comic conventions like Super Mega Fest and um, gaming centered ones like PAX East and then also Rhode Island Comic Con because I like to do a lot of cosplay so I like going to the Rhode Island Comic Con for that because then it means I don't have to worry about transporting armor and having anything break along the way I can just kind of go for the day and not worry about it. So, so it's like, so it's a variety for you. It's, yeah. It's been a variety. Yeah, everything from like, you know, New York Comic Con, which is more mainstream because it's got the comics, but it's also got a lot of pop culture stuff like Walking Dead, which is popular now. Um, I think they've had Game of Thrones there before, Star Wars, and then like the real old school comic conventions that are like, this is just kind of in a small hotel out in the hallways, everyone's crowded, going, just hanging out afterwards. And um, since I like gaming, like um, I don't hit PAX East every year, but I try and go when there's kind of big new releases, especially for 
League of Legends or if Blizzard's going to have something. Hmm. Oh, I gotta say, that is, that is definitely a lot of stuff you've covered. Yeah. So, if you have been to a Comic-Con, what was it like for you? Oh, uh, it's so much fun. It can be overwhelming. Like, the first year, you just don't even know where to begin. Um, as there's so much going on, uh, especially taking a step up from going to... Um, I think my first convention was Super Mega Fest, which is in a smaller hotel, and you can go through and easily do everything in a day. And then when I went to New York Comic Con, it was like unbelievable. There's, you keep walking thinking that you're gonna see everything, and there's still more and more and more. And you walk downstairs and you see celebrities, like big name people just sitting there. And, um, when I did the cosplay part of it, that was really intense. Like, it's so cool. You you feel almost like a celebrity, which is so nice, because it's such a, a great icebreaker. Like, people come up to you and talk to you about it, and as someone who has severe social anxiety, it made it nice, because I'm like, oh, I'm like, not nervous at all. I'm actually just talking to people and enjoying myself. It's a uh, a very friendly community. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I, I've been to Boston Comic Con before, so I can oh, yeah. get that feeling. Yeah, Boston is one that is on my list that I seem to miss every year. Um, but I've heard from everyone who goes there that Boston's like one of the best to do. Oh yeah, it was. Yeah. Are there are there any fun memories that you have from going to the convention? Oh yeah. Ah. Uh, so many. I think the probably funniest one for me was when I, I don't remember the exact year, but um, I went as the Lich King, which had me wearing chainmail. So it was very heavy and I got pretty tired throughout the day. So we found this place called the Quiet Room, just where you could just go and sit and everyone had to be quiet. I was like, oh, this is nice. Because when you're up on the show floor, it's like people are just constantly bumping into you. There's like crowds. You have no personal space whatsoever. You can almost feel claustrophobic. I'm like, all right, let's just sit in here and take a break. And my friend was sitting next to me and she said, well, how long do you want to stay down here? And I thought it was just a minute later when I went, um, eh, we can stay like maybe 15 more minutes. And she looked at me and started laughing. And I went, what? She goes, you've been asleep for like 40 minutes. Went, oh my God, really? Like I, I was so tired, I just fell asleep and immediately picked up the conversation where I had left off. Um, and like funny things when you run into people on the street, because we just would usually walk from our hotel to the convention. So you're just like walking down the street in a suit of armor or, you know, dressed as a night elf, ordering a latte at Starbucks, just in there like, hi, this is totally normal, <laughs> nothing to see here. <laughs> wow. I, yeah. I gotta say, that, that does sound pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. So what, what's the best part about going to these kinds of events? Uh, meeting people um, and getting to, uh, like, kind of talk to people who you wouldn't normally see. Like, you know, because everyone comes from all over and like you have the same interests, but because of life or demographics or whatever, you wouldn't like run into this person in your day to day life. So you get to have conversations with a lot of people that have similar interests. And, you know, it's nice when you're really excited about something and you can talk to someone who has just as much excitement about it as you. And um, getting to see like people who are such big stars who you've known for a while. Like I love Star Wars. So getting to see some of those people in person is really exciting because I've loved that for as long as I can remember. Like I grew up on it since I was like four or five. And oh, um, yeah. and at Rhode Island Comic Con, um, Jeremy Bullock was actually there. And I was like, oh my God, Boba Fett is my favorite character. And I practically lost it when I didn't realize who it was, but someone like walked behind me and had brushed up against me and I turned around and 
it's Jeremy Bullock walking over to his table. I'm like, oh my God, like, I don't want to like totally fangirl right now, but that's Jeremy Bullock and Boba Fett. And he just walked right by me close enough that he touched me. Like, and you know, outside of a convention, no one's going to understand why that's really exciting. But inside the convention, everyone's like, oh, and freaking out and all as like as excited as you are. And, you know, it's just like such a hyped up positive environment. Like you, it's hard not to get lost in the excitement there. Because even if you're not excited about something, someone else is so excited about it that you're like, I'm excited too, just because of how excited you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, even the part we said about the slurries, like, even, like, because there's a lot of lines where they line up, where you can get in line, they can, like, give you an autograph or a picture, yeah. which is, can be fun. fun. And oh, it's, yeah. It's hard to resist not going all fanboy or fangirl. Like, yeah. Like, you got to keep your cool. And it's nice when you meet them and they are totally cool with it. Like some of them you're like, oh, I don't know if they're gonna be okay with this or, and then you meet them and you're like, they're so chill and so into it. Like it's really great when you meet someone who you've kind of built up and they're actually the exciting person you thought they were. And then even waiting in line, like everyone's there for the same reason. So everyone's talking about how excited they are to meet this person and just like, builds it up more and more and more until you get to interact with them and like to be addressed on a personal level by someone of that caliber is, it's very exciting. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure it is. Mm. Have you thought about considering giving these conventions a try again? Yeah, it's um, the biggest thing now is like time and money because they can, especially if you're going to like New York Comic Con, it can get really expensive really fast. And the fact that I do cosplays for it definitely adds up. Um, but the, the biggest thing that kind of made me back off was it's really good that conventions have gotten popular because a lot of these things are more acceptable now in mainstream society. Like it's cool and totally okay to be into comic books or whatever and like we've got the marvel movies now which are like that They're kind huge. of stuff comes yeah it's huge and like popular support makes more of these great things happen but then there's the balance of at like the conventions sometimes they can get commercialized so like one year when i went to new york comic con there was space for maybe like six booths like it was almost a whole aisle and it was just a giant geico bus there and i'm like well, why is that there? You could have like vendors or cool interactive displays or something. So it was like, and getting tickets became very difficult. Yeah, no need to no need to advertise a, a insurance company at a comic yeah. book, at a convention for pop culture. Like, uh huh. It didn't make any sense, but because they had the money to buy the spots, that's what they did. So I would absolutely be thrilled to go back, but I kind of like keep an eye on things and see, is it gonna be worth it to go back or am I gonna be kind of disappointed and just go in and see, you know, advertisements for insurance or whatever. So I keep it to the smaller local ones now. So like Rhode Island Comic Con, um, Super Mega Fest, Boston I wanna hit up, I wanna try um, Kineticon. So, you know, I don't need to go to New York to have fun. I'm like, well, I'll go to these other ones that I know still kind of have kept to their grassroots origins. Yeah, yeah, there, there's there's a lot to check out. It's yeah. Part of it. So, um, la last question. What advice would you give to someone if they were to ask you about going to a convention like this? Oh, plan ahead. Um, if there's any, like, panel or something that you want to see make sure you know what it is when it is where it is and get in line for it like just kind of dedicate yourself to that and on a more practical note bring snacks if you can because the price of food in these venues is insane i think i paid four dollars for a can of soda at um the javits center so yeah so bring food and eat more than normal because you don't think about it but you're like you're walking all day so you're gonna get tired so like 
eat a lot more food and bring your own. Wear very comfortable shoes, drink lots of water, because it gets hot in there from the amount of people. And like the biggest one is, know where like the farthest away bathrooms are, because the ones in the middle are so popular, the lines like you might wait like half an hour because people will go in there to change yeah, like costumes like, too. Like fo like 40 minute lines almost. Yeah. <laughs> so you just gotta know where the like way out ones are. Like when we went to New York Comic Con, we knew, okay, if we go into the back corner of Artist's Alley, there's never anyone there because this bathroom is hidden behind a screen. So people don't even think like you're allowed to go back there. And there was never a line. There were always like three or four open stalls in there. So you don't think about it until you need it, but bathroom real estate at a convention is important. Very good advice. And th th thanks again for jo joining oh, me Oh, you're today. welcome. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. All right, folks, that is all the time that we have for today. Don't worry, though. There is more exciting info and stories coming your way. Tune in next time when we delve deeper into the convention itself and how those attending the convention can be best prepared for it. Once again, I'm your host, Ryan Havican, signing off for now and wishing that the Force be with you and that you live long and prosper. Remember, I'll be back. So long.